The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. 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 Remember. Year in. Year out. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. Season after season, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. At 59, American. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you back 15 minutes. Jack Benny is in his dressing room where Rochester is trimming his hair. Just a little more off the side, Rochester. Yes, sir. You know, Rochester, it may sound funny, but when I was a kid, I had the most beautiful head of thick golden curls. You did? Yeah. In fact, my mother was so proud of them, she gave a curl to every one of our relatives. Well, you better write to them, boss. It's time to get them back. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, hold on, Rochester. How much have you trimmed off the sides? Almost a handful. Good. Now sprinkle it around on top. <laughs> Thanks. What are you laughing at? This ain't no haircut. It's a landscaping job. Well, it's a little trick I learned in agricultural school. Good old Bandini Tech. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> shaving you now. Roger, I thought you said you forgot my shaving cream. I did, but this stuff will work fine. Well, I don't know. Are you sure it's good for shaving? Yeah, it says so on the box. Does, does everything. <laughs> I guess so. But I wish my face could have that Oxidol sparkle, you know? Now, hold still, boss, while I lather you up. Maybe you better open your shirt first. Okay. There you are. Say, boss, why do you wear that penny around your neck on a string? It's for uh, sentimental reasons, Rochester. This is the first penny I ever owned. You know that dollar I have framed up in my bedroom? Uh-huh. That's the first dollar I ever owned. You know that picture of my Maxwell that hangs in the den? Uh-huh. That's the first car I ever owned. That's the first car anybody ever owned. <laughs> what? That car scared more horses than the meat shortage. <laughs> No, I don't know. Now, hurry up and shave me, Rochester. Okay. Hold still while I lather you up. Rochester, you have to use that much. Hold still, boss. There, that ought to be enough lather. Now, where's it? Come in. Hiya, Rochester. I was just passing by and I... Say, that looks wonderful. Phil, stop trying to blow the foam off. It's me. <laughs> Get your foot off my knee. It's not a brass rail. <laughs> what a guy. Okay, I'm sorry, Jackson. What do you want, Phil? Well, I'd like to ask you what number I should play on the program today. I've been rehearsing two of them all week. What are they? Well, one of them, Stardust. What's the other one? That's what I like about the sound. <laughs> you better play the first one, Phil. I don't think the public is ready for the second one. <laughs> Go ahead, Rochester. Start shaving me. Yes, sir. Oh, say, Jackson, I want you and the rest of the gang to come over to the house tonight. I'm giving a little, uh, surprise party for Alice. Surprise party? What's it for? Well, I think it's her birthday. Think? Yeah, it's either today, March 12th, or June 29th. <laughs> Phil, for heaven's sake, you mean to tell me you don't know when Alice was born? Look, Jackson, I'm her husband, not her mother. <laughs> All right, Phil, I'll be glad to come. 
Shall I have dinner first? Well, of course not. I got everything all set. I prepared it myself. Now, what are you having? Well, there'll be martinis, Manhattans, old fashions, bourbon highballs, scotch and soda. Bell, bell. I mean, what kind of food are you serving? What? Food, food. Well, how do you like that? I knew I forgot something. <laughs> well, how in the world? Ouch! Rochester, you cut me. It's about time you felt it. I did it a minute ago. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? I thought you were dead. <laughs> Don't be funny. Did you cut me bad? It's nothing, boss. I just slipped the stem off your Adam's apple. <laughs> Clumsy thing. Now I have to buy a collar button. <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill, about the party, I'll be at your house at 8 o'clock. That'll give me enough time to buy a gift for Alice. I think I'll get her some candy. Well, you gave her candy last year, and she never got to eat any of it. She didn't? No, nah, she was carrying it upstairs and the bag broke. <laughs> Gee, that's a shame. And those jawbreakers roll so. <laughs> I'll have them put in a double bag this time. Uh-oh. What's the matter, Rochester? Did I cut you again? Can't you tell? Well, it would help if you'd bleed a little. <laughs> Well, I'm not going to force myself just for you. <laughs> Say, Phil, uh, what are you giving Alice for her birthday? Hey, Jackson, I got it right here in this little box. Let me show it to you. There. Ain't that a pretty? Oh, Phil, what a beautiful gold locket. She'll love that. Well, open it up, Jackson. There's a picture inside. No, I'd rather not, Phil. Alice should be the first one to see it. Well, we don't mind, Jackson. You're like one of the family. Go ahead. Open up the locket. Well, all right. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? A picture of Patrillo. <laughs> How thoughtful. Yeah. That's very nice. Phil, you can raise your head. I closed the locket. <laughs> Here. Look, Jackson... I better get out on the stage and get my musicians ready for the broadcast. I'll be seeing you, huh? Yeah. Oh. Well, I guess I better get in the studio, too. Rochester, wait for me here in the dressing room. Yes, sir. And you can tune in the radio and listen to my program if you wish. If I wish? Yes. Once I didn't listen to it and you put me in solitary confinement. <laughs> now, Rochester, you know I didn't compel you to stay in that room. No, but you took away all my clothes, told me I was free as a bird, and pointed to Capistrano. <laughs> What? I was shot down over Pismo Beach. Stop being silly. I'll see you after the broadcast. Okay. Gee, that Rochester makes up the wildest things. But they're kind of funny. I wonder if he'd be good on the radio. Nah, he'd always be late for rehearsal. Mm -hmm. See ya. <laughs> See, I, I hope we have a good show today. Oh, Mr. Benny, excuse me. Well, well, hello, Mr. Kitzel. Uh, pardon the intrusion, but last week you promised me a ticket for your broadcast. Oh, yes, yes. I have one right here in my pocket. Here you are. Thank you. You, uh... <laughs> you, must, uh, you must like my program, eh, Mr. Kitzel? Oh, it's one of my favorites. I like your program, Fever Magoo and McGee. <laughs> Take it or leave it. Huh? A date with Julia. Julia? <laughs> and on Friday night, I'm listening to People Are Schnooks. <laughs> no. no, no, no. You mean people are funny. Hmm, with this ticket, I'll soon find out. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes. Well, you better hurry in. I'll save you a seat in the first row. Laugh as hard as you can, will you? My heart is broken, and it tells me I should laugh. Your heart is broken? Why? Because yesterday, my alma mater didn't win the football game. Your alma mater? Notre Dame. <laughs> oh, did you go to Notre Dame? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Do you, do you remember the four horsemen? Yes. I was the stable boy. Uh, well, you better hurry, Mr. Kitzel. It's time for the show. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, Jackson, we're all set. Okay, Phil, let's go.
America, Take It Away, played by Phil Harris and his orchestra. And that strange click clack in the back was his boy shooting dice. <laughs> and now, ladies... <laughs> Thanks, Mary. I thought that was pretty clever myself. <laughs> that strange click clack in the back. Wasn't I wasn't it? laughing at that. What? I was reading a letter from Mama. Oh, oh, a letter from your mother, eh? Well, what does the Hildegard of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> oh, it's so funny, Jim. I know, I know. After her last letter, she had to join the Radio Writers Guild. <laughs> Go ahead, let's hear it, Mary. Okay. <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, I received your last note and was very glad to hear from you. As you know, last Tuesday was election day, so your father got up early, went to the polls, and voted for Hoover. <laughs> what? He feels he owes it to him because since 1928, Hoover has been the top button on his underwear. <laughs> That's what I like about your father. He's so loyal. Go on, Mary. Your sister, Babe, has become a career woman and now has a very novel job. She's a lifeguard at one of those new fountain pen companies. A lifeguard at a pen company? If anyone writes help underwater, she dives in and saves the pen. What a girl. Babe also received a lot of money from a picture studio in Hollywood. She sent a photograph of herself in her bathing suit, and they sent her a check for $5,000. Your sister, babe? They said her legs gave them the idea for the spiral staircase. <laughs> I knew she could do it. Uh, Say, Mary, Mary, does babe, does babe still go with that slap-happy prize fighter? No, she couldn't stand it any longer. Why, what happened? Well, they'd be sitting in the living room, and every time the phone rang, he'd jump up, shake hands, and give her a right hook to the jaw. <laughs> oh, well, then I don't blame her. Well, Babe didn't mind getting hit, but she had to keep him training all the time. <laughs> well, go on with the letter, Mary. Okay. Last Saturday night, Pop and I went to a big formal affair. Aunt Edie's silver wedding. Gee, has your Aunt Edie been married 25 years? No, 25 times. Oh. <laughs> now, don't interrupt anymore, Jack. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Mary, hmm? speaking of Aunt Edie, do you remember little Harold, who was the ring bearer at Aunt Edie's first wedding? Well, that's the one she's married to now. Well, what do you know? Outside of that, Pop and I haven't done much. Although, last week, we went to the movies and saw Merle Oberon in a wonderful picture. Gosh, she's beautiful. Her, your father took one look at her, then looked at me, and when we got home, I realized what Babe went through with that prize fight. <laughs> Gee... Fortunately, my girdle broke and I wedged him into a neutral corner. Hmm. Yeah. Some but, more, is there? Oh, yes. Oh, go ahead. Hey, your mother is a riot. Go ahead. By the way, Mary, I certainly envy you being out there in California. It was so cold here yesterday that Papa's teeth chattered all night. They made so much noise, he took them out of the glass and put them back in his mouth. <laughs> What a family. That's all for now. We'll write again next week. Your loving mother, Amber Livingston. Hey, that's, that's a nice letter, Mary. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a P.S. I suppose Jack will start writing to us again now that airmail is down to five cents. What does she mean, five cents? I can get Rochester to fly it there for nothing. <laughs> that's a good one. I don't see anything funny about that. Neither do I, Jackson. You don't? No. No. Hmm. Rochester and his crazy jokes. <laughs> now, kids. Come in. Hello, everybody. What's cooking? Oh, hello, Dennis. Dennis, you're a little bit late. Where were you? Well, I'd have been here earlier, Jackson, but I stopped across the bar in a bar. You gotta live, bub. You gotta live. <laughs> stopped across a bar in a bar? That sounds like Chiss Sweet Sandwich. You know? <laughs> oh, boy, am I dizzy. Dennis. Dennis, you mean to say they served you a drink? No, they said I was too young, so they just spun me around on the stool. <laughs> oh. Hey, Livy, how about you and me painting the town? Dennis. What's eating you, bub? You want to fight? <laughs> a fight? Hey, Phil, how about an Alka-Seltzer? You don't need one. 
Dennis, what's the matter with you? All they did was spin you around on a stool. Yeah, but they held my head in one place. <laughs> You, you mean they... I don't know whether I'm coming or Dennis. Believe me, you're Dennis and cut out all this nonsense. Okay. He hates me because I'm head loose and fancy free. Dennis, nobody hates you. Now, come on, let's have your song. Okay. That kid can find... Mo Phil, where are you going? I'll be back in a minute, Jackson. Hey, Dennis, what stool were you on? Phil, come back here! Dennis is going to sing. Now, go ahead, <laughs> Somewhere in the Night, sung by Dennis Day. And Dennis, you sang that beautifully. I wouldn't know. I'm loaded. <laughs> You're not loaded. And I don't want to hear any more talk like that. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, sit down. Yes, sir. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do a sketch entitled The Strange Loves of Martha Benny. Whisper his age. Mary. <laughs> Now, in this play... Wait a minute, Jackson. Last week, you announced that we were going to do the killers. Well, we were, but I'm going to postpone it until two weeks from tonight. Why'd you do that, Jack? Because Mark Hellinger, the producer of the picture, asked us to wait two weeks before we louse it up. <laughs> and by that time, the picture will have played in more cities. Well, what's the thing you're going to do tonight? Well, actually, Mary, it's going to be a story based on my career as an entertainer. It opens with the actual incident of my first appearance on the stage in Washington, D.C. I'll never forget that night. See, my performance was so great that right in the middle of my act, one of my fans got so excited, he jumped right on the stage. That was John Wilkes Booth. He was making his getaway. <laughs> Chiss sweet. Chiss sweet. Oh. Oh. Now, in this play, oh, ladies and Jack. gentlemen... What? Jack, what? before we do the sketch, uh, what about the commercial? The commercial? Oh, yes, yes. Go ahead, Don. Okay. Ready, fellas? Hmm. Not with them, Don. The quartet is out. But, Jack, you've got them signed for three more weeks. I don't care if they're signed for three years. And another thing, 
They've got an option coming up, and I'm dropping it. Okay, if that's the way you want it. Well, you fellas can take that offer you got from the Hollywood Bowl. It's all right with me, just so they... Hollywood Bowl? They had an offer from the Bowl? Yes, I hate to bring this up, Jack, but they were offered so much money that they... Oh, yeah? Well, I've got them under contract. (laughs) They can't break it, I know, because I've already tried. Well, all right, then. Will you listen to the commercial we've prepared? Well, all right. What's it going to be? Our musical background will be till the end of time. Oh, oh, well, that might be good. Yeah, go ahead. Ready, boys. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L.S., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., M.F.T., L.S., M.F.T., 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 Don, Don. Don. Don, that that isn't it. That isn't what I want. Wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute, fellas. Don, just a minute, fellas. Wait. Don. Don. Don, look at me. Don, Donzy boy. Look at me. Don, now look, Don, uh, Don, I'm being nice. Look, look, Don, I'm smiling. Don. (laughs) Don, can't you see that that isn't in keeping with the rest of the program? It's too slow, Donzy Poo. I mean, that... (laughs) It has no pep. Well, Jack, if you want something lively, just listen to this. What? The William Tell Overture. Hit it, boys. Elephant, 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 elephant,
Hey, bartender. What? Give these fellas a spin on me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, saving bonds are vitally important in the nation's battle against price inflation and for the future and welfare of us all. It is important that we, who have developed habits of thrift during the war, continue to build financial security for ourselves and our children. Protect your future by extra bonds now. Thank you. We'll be back in just a minute. But first, here is my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs. Make no mistake. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. James Maynard Talley, independent tobacco warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, has been in the tobacco business all his life. He said, Season after season, I've seen good tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. Yes, good tobacco, full of flavor, ripe and mild. I've smoked Luckies for 18 years. Yes, year after year, independent tobacco experts, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, men like Mr. Talley, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. <laughs> L-S-M-F-T... L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with you next Sunday at this time when our guests will be Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman and Leo DeRocha. Good night, everybody. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. The Jack Benny Program. Quality of product is essential to continuing success. <laughs> Let that historic chant remind you that year in, year out, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And season after season, at market after market, independent tobacco experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. No doubt about it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. American. <laughs> The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, we take you out to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills where we find Jack and Rochester in the garage. Hmm. I can't understand why the car won't start. Try it again, Rochester. Yes, sir. Hmm. 
Try it again, Rochester. Okay. Uh, try it again, Rochester. Well, I put the door back on. Okay. Rochester. Rochester, it didn't start. No, but the door stayed on. <laughs> oh, good, good. I can't, I can't understand what's wrong. Maybe the motor's worn out. Oh, no, that's impossible. The speedometer only says 88,000 8, miles. Oh, come now, boss. We pushed it further than that. <laughs> well, you better go up and go in the house and call Mr. Harris and tell him to pick me up on his way to the studio, eh? Oh, I did that before we came out to the garage. Oh, then you knew there was something wrong with the... Rochester, did you use my car last night? Well, uh... uh... Rochester, I just found a bobby pin on the front seat. A bobby pin? Yeah. <laughs> what are you laughing at? There's only two of us here and it ain't mine. <laughs> well, it isn't mine either. Rochester, you used my car last night to take your girl out. Uh-huh. Well, how did it go? Oh, very good, very good. Hurry like a kitten. That's funny, and today it won't even start. Oh, you mean the car. <laughs> yes, the car. How did it go? Oh, fine, boss, fine. Until I lost a tire off the front wheel. You lost a tire? Well, why didn't you come back home? Well, the rim got caught in the trolley car tracks, and I had to go all the way to Pasadena before I could make a left turn. <laughs> <laughs> Pasadena? Yeah, and on the way back, we got stalled right in the middle of the Santa Claus Lane Parade. You and your girl, huh? What happened? Nothing. We prefer Mulholland Drive. <laughs> now, well, Roger, in the future, when you want to go out joyriding, borrow your friend's car. You know who I mean, Sam. He loaned it to you once before. Oh, well, Sam ain't got that car anymore. He's got two motorcycles now. Oh. Traded his car in, eh? No, he backed into a buzzsaw. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Did Sam get hurt? No, but if he hadn't leaned over to put down the window, he'd have been twins. <laughs> well, look, Rochester, there's no use working with this any longer. Okay, Jackson, I'm here. Be right with you, Phil. So long, Rochester. I'll see you after the broadcast. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm sorry to take you out of your way, Phil, but I couldn't get my car started. You know, Jackson, when you bought that car, it's too bad you didn't wait just one more year. They came out with a wonderful improvement. Yeah? What was it? The Pony Express. <laughs> All right, all right, come on, let's get to the studio. Say, this car really runs nice. Well, you know me, Jackson. Nothing but the best for Harris. Oh, boy, what a fancy dashboard. What are all those buttons for? Well, that's a radio. I push this button and get Australia. I push this button and get London. This button, China. This button, France. And on up to eight countries. Gee, my radio, I've only got three buttons. Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> I can only get Anaheim when I'm in Azusa. How do you get Cucamonga? Short wave. <laughs> they got a wonderful program from there, too. John's Other Smudge Pot. <laughs> I never miss it, you know. Oh, boy. Phil, this is really a swell car. How much did it cost, Phil? $3,500. $3,500. Gee, I wish I had two shows. <laughs> Hey, Phil. Phil, the traffic light is changing. I see it. I see it. Watch it, will you, kid? Oh, Martha. Look who's sitting in that car. Jack Benny. Well, isn't that a coincidence? Three weeks ago we were standing here, and he drove by then, too. Yes. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> Martha, what are you crying about? Well, I can't help it. When Mr. Benny was in vaudeville, he was my husband's favorite comedian. Well, that's nothing to cry about. I was thinking of my husband. He's been dead for 40 years. <laughs> oh, say, Martha, I've just noticed who's sitting next to Mr. Benny. Who? Look. Well, box back my coat and button my shoes if it isn't ham hocks and turnip greens. <laughs> What a 
thrill. Let's go over to the car and ask them for her autograph. Oh, no, Emily. They'll think we're trying to pick them up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gee, those, those two old ladies are sweet. You know, Phil, I saw them at the football game yesterday. Oh, did you go, Jackson? There was such a mob out there. How'd you ever park your car? Oh, I didn't take my car. It was such a nice day, I decided to swim. <laughs> Fortunately, it was downstream. Say goodnight, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and okay, gentlemen. Okay, Don, okay, we're here. I'm sorry we were late, but I couldn't get my car started, and then we got held up in traffic. Well, that's all right, Jack. We filled in with a couple of orchestra numbers. Good, good, Don. But who led the band? Frankie. Frankie? What does he know about music? Are you kidding, Jackson? Frankie's a natural. He was born with a banjo on his knee. <laughs> he was? Yeah, they had to operate on him before they could get his pants on. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that up and you'll be another Carmen Lombardo, Phil. I'll settle for anybody. <laughs> now, Don, uh, Mary is still in Palm Springs, so when we do our play tonight, we'll have to... Hello, get... Mr. Benny. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Phil. Hiya, kid. Hello, Don. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mary. I guess she's mad at me. <laughs> Dennis, she's not mad at you. Mary isn't here. She's in Palm Springs. Oh, now, Don... Well, if she isn't mad, why doesn't she call me up? Well, she has no reason to call. Dennis, take my word for it. If Mary were here, she'd say hello to you. Oh, yeah? Well, I wouldn't even answer her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, all right, don't answer her. Now, Don... Yes, Jack? As you know, two weeks ago, we were going to do our version of The Killers. But we had to postpone it until tonight. Who does she think she is, anyway? <laughs> Dennis, I told you, Mary's in Palm Springs. Now, will you please forget it? Okay. Oh, say, Jack, uh, before you tell me about the play tonight, do you mind if I talk to you about a very delicate subject? Delicate subject? What is it, Don? The quartet is here, ready to do the commercial. Don, uh, look, uh, Don, I want to talk to you a minute. Not in anger. Look, kid. Look, Don, just a nice, friendly chat. Sit down. Sit down, Don. Well, there isn't any chair here. Well, sit on the quartet. <laughs> Go ahead. Get up, you're hurting him. <laughs> now, Don, let's get one thing straight. The quartet is through. Finish. Listen, Jack, give them one more chance, and if you don't like what they've prepared for today, I'll never bother you again. Don, look. Come I on, boys, Il Trovatore. I don't want Il Trovatore. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Don, Il Trovatore. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Don, Il Trovatore is not for... Don, that doesn't fit. Look. Don. 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 Boys. Don. Fellas. Boys. Don. Look, Don, this doesn't... Yes, fine tobacco. Don, look, no good, believe me. Quality of quality is essential. Essential. L-S-M-F-T. 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 
Don, I don't care if they applaud all night. Opera has no place on this program. All right, Jack, then listen to this. Don, I've Take it, a... boys. Holiday for strings. Holiday for strings. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Don. Don. <laughs> Don, I've had enough. I can't stand it any longer. Where's that contract? Here it is. There. That settles that. <laughs> oh, Jack, I don't blame you if you feel that way about the quartet. That's the best thing to do. Tear up the contract. Their contract? That was yours. What? <laughs> Think about it. I guess that'll hold him for a while. For you, for me, forevermore, sung by Dennis Day. Very good, Dennis. Hello, Mary. <laughs> what, what was that? I'm giving her one more chance. Oh, go sit down. Okay. Tonight, for our... Not on the quartet. <laughs> Find a chair. I wish Mary was here and I was in Palm Springs. And now... I wouldn't say hello to you either. Oh, quiet. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight, as our feature attraction, we're going to do our version of Mark Hellinger's thrilling, exciting, universal international picture, the famous Hemingway story, The Killers. This is the story of two gunmen who walk into a little lunchroom looking for a guy called the Swede. It's midnight, and the lunchroom is deserted, except for one lonely customer. Well, 
I think I'll have a bite to eat and then go home. Yeah, I wish I could close up and go home myself. This place is quieter than a coal mine. <laughs> kind of a dreary night, too. Yeah. Say, Charlie, uh, don't the Swede usually drop in about this time? Uh-huh. Hasn't been in now for two or three weeks. Understand he's sick in bed. Oh, a Democrat, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I miss him, too. Used to stay here for hours. Just sitting by the jukebox, listening to the Missouri Walk. Now, <laughs> uh, what do you have to eat? Oh, I don't know. Uh, how'd you like some squaw baked in wine? Nah. You got any ham hock stewed in bourbon? <laughs> now nah, we're all out of ham hocks. Good, just bring me the juice. <laughs> okay. Say, Curly, next week when you come here, you won't know this joint. It's going to be real ritzy. New curtains and drapes and rugs on the floor. Nice new lampshades and everything. This lunchroom is going to be beautiful. Well, it's about time this joint looks like the sweat band out of the Brown Derby. <laughs> Well, don't worry, I'm going to fix everything. In fact, I've already hired the interior decorators. Say, Curly, hurry up and finish eating, will you? It's such a nasty night, I want to close up and go home. I'll be through in a minute. How about a napkin? Use the drapes, I'm getting new ones. <laughs> yes, sir, I can just see the way this place is going to... Hmm. What's the matter, Charlie? Look out the window. Two guys just stepped off the curb and are crossing the street. I never seen them before. Yeah. They look kind of tough. Hey, I'm getting out of here. No, 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 don't go. I don't want to be here alone. <laughs> One of them guys it looks like Edward G. Robinson. Hey, look, they're coming this way. Yeah. <laughs> What'll be, gentlemen? I say, what'll it be, gentlemen? Gentlemen, what'll it be? What are you shaking for, blue eyes? <laughs> it ain't cold in here. Getting ready to close up, gentlemen, so if you want something to eat, you better order it. Hey, uh, Slugger. What is it, Eddie? <laughs> Blue Eyes is in a hurry. Maybe we ought to slow him down. Yeah, down. <laughs> now, look, gentlemen, uh, I don't want no trouble. What do you have? You can have some ham and eggs or some corned beef hash or a mixed green salad. Ouch! I don't like salad. <laughs> now, look, mister, I want to close up this joint so you better order and get out of here, because if you don't, I'll call the police. Well, did you hear that, slugger? Blue Eyes is going to call the police. Yes, I am. Well, one move out of you, and I'll fill you so full of holes you look like a chiss sweet sandwich. <laughs> That's Swiss cheese. Now, don't tell me how to get a laugh. What? It amuses Slugger. Yes. <laughs> now, see here, mister. I want to ask you a question. Would you fellas... Now, look, bright boy, I ask the questions around here, see? You just answer them and do as I tell you, see? If not, you'll get hurt, see? Now, get me something to eat, see? And be quick about it, Look. Oh, shut up, <laughs> Now, wait a minute. I don't have to stand for this. I'm a citizen. I pay my taxes. I got my rights, and you, can, you can't come in here and push me around. No, we can't, huh? No, you... Wait a minute. What are you reaching your back pocket for? Just my handkerchief. Your handkerchief? Yeah. You must have a bad cold. 
Yeah. I just took those shots for it. <laughs> oh, Eddie, you keep that up and you'll be another Phil Harris. <laughs> now, look, will you fellas... Put... Wait a minute. Now I know who you guys are. You're the killers. You're looking for the Swede. Did you hear that, Slugger? Bright boy thinks we're looking for the Swede. Well, ain't we been looking for no Swede? No. <laughs> Now, bright boy, we ain't looking for no Swede. We came in here to talk to you. Me? Yeah, you. We heard you're going to get this dump redecorated. Yes, I am, but what's that got to do with you? Well, we want to know something. What? Who are you getting your chintz from? <laughs> chintz? Yeah. And the silk lining for your drapes. I'm not going to have him lined. Ha, ha, ha. Do you hear that? <laughs> now, listen, bright boy. You're going to have drapes, and you're going to have them lined. You're getting them from us, see? I can't get them from you. I'm buying all my curtains and drapes from Johnson and Company. Right on the corner. <laughs> Johnson ain't there anymore. <laughs> you mean to say that... <laughs> What's that? Johnson, he just passed by. <laughs> Gee, rumors are flying, and so is Johnson. Well, you guys can't frighten me. I'm buying my curtains, drapes, and chins from anybody I like, see? And that gun in your hand ain't scaring me either, see? I don't even think you can shoot straight. No, I can't, huh? See that row of plates up there? Yeah. Well, watch this. And the plate next to it. And the plate on the other side. Ha <laughs> ha! You missed! Hmm. I put a curve on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I'm not afraid of you now. You took three shots before and three shots now. You're out of bullets. Uh, no, I ain't, bright boy. This is a never sharp gun. <laughs> it's got a six month supply of lead. <laughs> I should have known with that deep pocket clip. Hey, you know, the gun I have only shoots six times. Look. Here, I'll show you. See? Hey, that's a pretty nice gun you got there. You're darn right it is. Now, come on, now. Up with your hand, both of you. Oh, you want to shoot it out, huh? Well, take that. Ha, ha, ha. You missed me twice. <laughs> now, you take this. Oh! Oh. oh, you got me, Slugger. You got me. I'm dying, Slugger. I knew the day would come. I knew I couldn't get away with it. Everything's getting dark. I can't see. I'm dying, Slugger. They finally got me. Me. Little Caesar. <laughs> Goodbye, Slugger. I'm dying. I'm dying. Dying. Well, fall down, you big ham. <laughs> Maybe this will help. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first here is my good friend, Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs. Common sense will tell you, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Mr. George Alfred Webster, independent tobacco warehouseman of Durham, North Carolina, has seen millions of pounds of tobacco bought and sold at auction, and he said... At market after market, at auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Tobacco that makes one grand smoke. I've smoked Luckies myself for 29 years. Year in, year out, independent tobacco experts like Mr. Webster, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco means real deep-down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. 
so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Edward G. Robinson for appearing with us tonight through the courtesy of the Thalia Productions, producers of that soon-to-be-released picture, The Red House. We'll be with you next Sunday at the same time. Good night, Mary. Good night, Mary. Good night, Herman. <laughs> Herman? I'm mad at Mary. Oh, yes, yes, I forgot. Good night. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.